I want to turn in, uh, to and recognize the Senator from Alaska, who is the ranking member on our Energy Committee. Uh, as the Senator from Wyoming said, she has recently put out a blueprint uh, for energy development, energy independence, energy security for our nation. It is comprehensive. It includes all types of energy and, uh, again, developing, developing them the right way with good environmental stewardship and uh, the latest technologies, but truly uh, accomplishing something that the people of this country very much want, and that is energy security. And so at this point, I would turn to the senator from Alaska and ask for some of her comments on this Keystone Pipeline project in terms of the economic benefits and the need for our nation to truly have energy security. Well, to my colleague from North Dakota, thank you. Thank you for your leadership on not only how we can get the Keystone Pipeline moving, how we can ensure that a, a resource from our friend and ally, Canada, uh, can be utilized, can help us here in this country to truly gain that level of energy security that we've been talking uh, about. Uh, several good comments about uh, the report that I released last week, my Energy 2020. Just happened to have a, a copy of it here on the floor. But out of 115 pages, I can distill it in one simple bumper sticker, and that is energy is good. Energy is necessary. If you look at the cover of, of the report here, it's essentially a, uh, a map of, of the world from uh, from way up high, and when you're looking down and you see the lights at night, you can tell the prosperous places within the world. It's where the lights are on. It's where our energy is. And so when we talk about energy, I think it's important to, to really put it in the context of how important, how significant it is to our daily lives. A couple weeks ago, or a week ago now, we were all reminded of energy when there were 34 minutes of, of dead time during the Super Bowl. And uh, a lot of folks paying attention to, well, where, where do we get our energy sources from? It starts a good conversation, a necessary conversation. And in, in, in my document, I focus on five different areas when we need to talk about energy policy. And I'm looking for an energy policy that is, is abundant, affordable, clean, diverse, and secure. And when we talk about the fifth one, the security, this is where the Keystone XL project really comes into play. When we're talking about security, that doesn't necessarily mean that everything that we want as a nation is going to be produced right here within our own borders. What it means is how we reduce vulnerabilities from others how we can eliminate our reliance on OPEC. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a reality. This is doable. This is possible by 2020. This is not some pie in the sky. Let me, let me just give you some numbers here. In 2011, Canada produced roughly 2.9 million barrels of crude oil per day. Mexico produced 2.6. When you add this, to the approximately 6 million barrels that the U.S. produces each day. Total North American production, which is 11.5 million barrels, is far greater than the nation's net imports, which is 8.5 million barrels back last year. More than double the imports from OPEC. More than double the imports from OPEC. So if we can do more within our own borders here and ensure that we are able to rely on our friends to the north, the Canadians, and our friends to the south, the Mexicans. We can displace, we can fully displace our reliance on OPEC imports by the year 2020. But part of this, this achieving this goal is being able to count on the, the Keystone XL pipeline. It, it, is, it is as simple as that. It's about security. It is about ensuring that we've got a, a supply that not only helps us achieve that energy security, but it allows us to achieve economic security in so far as the jobs that are created 
the, the, the really the, the ripple effect that goes out. It's not just constructing one pipeline. It's the ripple effect that comes from this boom of opportunity within our country. So it's jobs and economic security. It is energy security from the perspective of reducing our reliance on those countries that we don't necessarily like, removing ourselves from the need to import OPEC oil, and having the ability to control our destiny from a perspective of, of, of abundance rather than from scarcity. We should look to our friends and neighbors. We should work with the Canadians. The President should sign the, X, uh, the Keystone XL pipeline bill into law. He should make it happen. We shouldn't be waiting any longer for all the reasons that so many on this floor have discussed this afternoon. So to my friend, uh, the Senator from North, North uh, Dakota, thank you for your leadership here. Let's make this happen now. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Senator from Alaska again for being here today talking about the importance of moving forward with the Keystone XL pipeline project uh, and again for her leadership on energy issues. She is our ranking member on energy and I think no matter who you talk to she is absolutely inclusive when she talks about energy development. All aspects. The energy development, the environmental stewardship, the jobs developing all types of energy, and she brings tremendous knowledge and experience to energy issues. And so I would urge the administration to listen to one of the leading voices in energy uh, in our country, and that's Senator Murkowski, and ask them to approve this project. The, uh, the senior senator.